All right, welcome back to Talking Shop. We're going to take a look today at uh, the first Sunday after Christmas. This is Galatians 4, the one we're going to look at today. Uh, the other option was Galatians 3. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about adoption. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the history around adoption uh, in the Roman world that Paul would have had in mind when he's writing this text. Um, and most of all, you're going to hear that we get to call God our Father, okay. which is a really big deal. So, uh, Stick with us and uh, let's get after it. Yeah. Spit out my Lord in every way. Yet I'm still welcome in the yard. Hey, and welcome back to Talking Shop. We're, uh, we're at what week is this? Like this Christmas? is the first week after Christmas, right? First, the first Sunday after Christmas. And we are in beautiful Kingman, Arizona, and hanging out with you guys, working on the New Testament. We, we chose. The text for Galatians 4, there's a Galatians 3 text as well you can do for this Sunday. If you want to do the circumcision in the name of Jesus. Right, which really isn't what Galatians 3 is per se. I mean, it's, I mean, it kind of is. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, right? That's yeah. the, that, that's that text. Uh, but we, we chose Galatians 4, uh, 4 to 7 to work on. Uh, really interesting text, right? The fullness of time had come. Yeah. This connects you back to Christmas. Right. This connects you to, you, know, you can talk about, you know, how uh, when when Jesus shows up, like it's at the perfect time. You've got the Romans who are in charge. There's general peace, per se, throughout mm -hmm. the known world. Uh, you know, you can talk about all that stuff, kind of re rephrase some of those things uh, from from Christmas Day. Although you, hopefully you kept it a little bit short on Christmas Day and gave your people that gift, right? Uh, <laughs> and and so you know you can go back into that stuff all this time. God sends His Son, right? And then we get this anti Gnosticism, anti kind of the, these texts. Like, you know, He's born of a born of a woman, right? Born under the law. Mm -hmm. uh, he's He's the one, and it's important this idea of being being born under the law because in the next verse, in verse five. He, if he's not born under the law, then he can't redeem people under the law, yeah. right? I mean, that's the whole point. Yeah, he's got to be under the law, yeah. uh, and of course, he is, and he fulfills the law perfectly. Uh, yeah, so you can you can play off of that a little bit in your sermon. You can play off of Christmas Day a little bit in your sermon as you're working through this. Uh, but ultimately, I think you're trying to get uh, to the end of verse five and then verse six here. Yeah. Right, this this question of, of adoption, mm -hmm. uh, really a, a beautiful picture of what God does uh, for us. Yeah. Uh, although I had a buddy who was adopted, and you're like, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm tired of hearing about how God adopts people. Adoption hasn't been that cool. <laughs> it's like it's like okay, I get it, right? Yeah. But this this is really a, an, an an amazing idea that God will adopt us mm -hmm. uh, as as His kids. But if you're preaching that, I mean, be careful. There's some people. Who you know may not you may have to just like when you're talking about God as Father, yeah, right. Some people had garbage fathers, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some people's experiences as being adopted was probably not great, and so you have to rephrase that. You, you've got to you've got to reframe what it means to be adopted as a son of God. Yeah. Uh, it's not it's not human adoption by any means. Yeah, it's kind of like the, like the whole Old Testament is a is a shadow, dimly lit of of who Jesus is, and in the same way, like <clears throat> your earthly father, he may have sucked, mm -hmm. but he is mm -hmm. a shadow. Or your adoptive parents, or your you adoptive may have been pretty parents. mediocre, you know, or you yeah. may have been one of a dozen adopted kids, and you yeah. might have felt, I mean, you might have been great about it, you might have felt you were ignored, you know, sure. that kind of thing. Um, uh, but that's not who God is, right? Yeah. He adopts you. Uh, you were talking about the adoption process in in, yeah. in Rome a little bit. Say that one more time for these folks. Yeah, so last time I preached on Galatians, and it's <clears throat> it's later on in the in the letter, but Paul talks about putting on Christ as if you're putting on new clothes. And um, from my research of when I preached on this the last time, um, within Roman adoption that was that was part of like this rite of adoption I guess you could say where they um, they physically put on this clothing of sonship in order to show that you're not just some random guy anymore no you belong to this family and 
uh, what what a beautiful picture of you know what yeah. we have in in our baptisms, which is the whole point that Paul makes later is that you're baptized. You know, you put mm-hmm. on Christ's new clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's that picture. You're you're a son. You're an heir. Yeah. You you receive the firstborn son's inheritance because of Jesus, and that's even if you're a lady, you get the yeah. you get the yeah. firstborn son's inheritance, which is great news. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that clothed in Christ idea. I mean, that's Paul uses that. I don't know how many times you could probably do a search on that, but I know it's it's if it's not a dozen, I'd be surprised. Right, mm-hmm. this idea of and it's that idea of taking off one thing and putting on another. Exactly. Uh, and and yeah, and and you're a son, right? That's verse six. You're you're a son, nothing less, nothing more. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're you're a son of God, and He sends His Holy Spirit to you. And then we get this really cool thing where He goes, and you get to call God Abba, yeah. right? This Aramaic Papa. intimacy word, which like for the Hebrews, like they wouldn't even say the word Yahweh, right? Right, they would yeah. use Jehovah. They, they, they like a personal name for God was beyond their understanding. And here comes Paul. Of course, Jesus first, right? right. Uh, but here comes Paul, and he goes, "Yeah, you can call him Abba." Yeah. It's this crazy intimate word with God as Father, and 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 that this is yours as a son. You get to, you know, it, it's. I mean, you can come with all sorts of pictures, you know, of, of dads climbing on, you know, or not dad, but the children climbing on their dad's lap or, you know, right. going to the park or whatever it is yeah. you, know, you do with your kids, you know, that kind of thing. As, as a dad, if you're not a dad, your experience with your own father, if you're not, your experience with your grandfather, or you some father figure in your life, you know, you can find mm-hmm. right. that goes, yeah, this idea of Abba, God, the creator of the universe, right, the one who pick the fullness of time, says, hey, you get to call me daddy. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And it's pretty unbelievable uh, that, that he would h- humble himself towards us in that way. Yeah. It's, it's like kind of the point of Christmas. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it takes us right back into Christmas, right? right? And, the humility of God the Father, the humility of God the Son. I mean, mm-hmm. just, yeah. And uh, you can even tie it back into last week's epistle mm-hmm. reading, right? From mm-hmm. Hebrews, From Hebrews 1, yep. that he is the son, right? And we are in Christ. And it's mm-hmm. only through Christ, right? Taking this in context, mm-hmm. the, the adoption as sons and being an heir is not separated from Christ. Mm-hmm. It is only through Christ. And it's only because at the fullness of time had come right. that he sent his son, Right in the incarnation at Christmas, that we received these things. Right, and so it's not. And uh, also going with the theme of adoption, right? Uh, barring the awful situations of adoption, mm-hmm. um, adoption really has nothing to do with the kid being adopted. Right, it's not that right. they they earned adoption. Mm-hmm. Right, and being an heir, when you're an heir, you don't do anything. Right. Right, like you don't go and work and you put away 15% in your IRA or your 401k and you have this awesome yeah. retirement plan. Yeah. You generally have nothing to offer your adopted right? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but I think sometimes as Christians, it's easy to get into, well, I've put in my time on the elder board. Mm-hmm. I've put in my, my offering in the envelope. I've put in my time sitting through pastor's awful sermons. <laughs> I've, I've done my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, you're off. You're watching this video. And yeah. I, you're getting better if you're watching this video, right? right? Craft of preaching. <laughs> I've, I've sacrificed, and because I've sacrificed, then I get yeah. this great retirement account in heaven. Like Christianity is all about the retirement plan. Yeah. In in the paradise. Yeah. But no, you've received adoption, and adoption is solely by the grace of the one adopting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, even mm-hmm. in your sinful human adoptions, right. right? My siblings, right? It's only because my parents adopted them. They didn't earn adoption. Sure. And when you're an heir, it's just an inheritance. It's right. it's all grace. It's all gift. Right. And it's 
only through the Son. Right. Well, and this is where we as like Lutherans go when we're talking about baptism, per se, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and you it, did it on me this week. Yeah, I did. I, I went there because I knew you were going there I, anyways. I did it first. Yeah, he did it first. I mean, this idea that, that he comes to you, you're not going to him, even if it seems like you're going to him, it's still not you. It's him right. coming to you and saying, you're my son, right? You're not a slave anymore. Well, that's verse 7, right? You're, you're not... You're not, and this is if you were doing Galatians three, that's what it talks about. This having a yeah. having a slave master, but now we're no longer under the law. We're under grace, and we're sons right. and instead of yeah. being under this slave master, you know. And and it's it's this idea of the freedom uh, that we have in Christ. I, I think if if we actually understood the level of freedom that we have as Christians, uh, being heirs of of the, of the Creator of the universe. Mm -hmm we would probably be pretty shocked and pretty uncomfortable with it. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, you guys know this. The, the sermons that, that your people respond to are the ones where you bang on the law for, for 15 minutes and you give them two minutes of gospel, right? Yep. And they come out of there feeling all guilty, right? You know, and those are the ones like, oh, that was so good. Thank you so much. And it's, it's like, unless, be right between the yeah. eyes, Pastor. <laughs> right between that. the eyes, yeah. Unless they come from a law-heavy tradition, into the, right. one of our churches right. yeah. and, then and, the other and they're hearing all gift and they're like you didn't give me a checklist to, to leave with I, yeah. I'm not leaving with a to-do list I, mm -hmm. what yeah. do I do with this freedom which occasionally a, a, what does it look like to be a Christian it's not a bad thing right. it's not right. a bad thing at all but at the end of the day we're not slaves right. we're heirs yeah. and, and that what, I mean, what glorious freedom we have in Christ uh, as a result like I said it, it would I think it should really almost disturb us. Yeah, totally. How, how well, free we are. In like the insanity of being able to call God dad. Right, it goes right back to that. Like go back to Jesus mm -hmm. when Jesus says things about my father in heaven, my father in heaven. The Lord's and, Prayer. Yeah, right. yeah, totally. Our father. But what did the Lord Pharisees heaven, do? Right? What The Pharisees got pissed when he called God his father right. because he was equating himself as equal with God. Right. But now in Christ... Like we get to call him father. Right. So we yeah. like and Paul's a Pharisee. So this from the party of the people that got mad, here's this guy who became a Christian says, No, you call him Abba. Yeah. You call him Father. And, and celebrate it, right? Yeah. That seems like something he might have learned from Jesus. Yeah. When you know yeah, during that, that time, that time right? Yeah. That when he's you know that, this is how this is who, how I want you to. I mean, I'm your brother. I'm your Lord. I'm your Savior. This mm -hmm. is how I want you to. I mean, obviously we, that's not here, but sure. yeah. it just seems like something is like where did he get that from? That he second or third level of heaven yeah. he got taken to. <laughs> right. Yeah. He didn't get it from himself. That's yeah. for yeah. sure. Good. I distinctly remember a conversation with one of my little brothers who is adopted about. Christianity and the faith and his understanding was well you have to be a good person and if you're a good person then God will reward you mm -hmm. and then pointing out to him that if if that was true then our parents are more gracious than God right because they adopted him and he didn't have to be a, a good little baby to be adopted right right it was all they just adopted him by grace. Right. And so like that understanding of in your understanding of having to be a good person and work hard for God, you've made your earthly parents more gracious than the creator of the universe. Right. When 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 the when the truth is the exact opposite. Right. Yeah, right. Exact opposite. And if you were looking for an illustration, there it is. Thank you Adam yeah. uh, for this week. Good. Like us, subscribe it. Uh, we hope that's helpful. We hope you're preaching these New Testament texts. Great texts we have as we move through uh, through Christmas and towards Epiphany and all those great things. Uh, like I said, like, subscribe, comment. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear how you're preaching these things. Uh, what are you using? What forms are you using? What, what are you doing to get to get through these texts with your people? Uh, but it, and, and anyways, God bless your preaching.